Hello everyone, back to you into today's second video. Go to have a look at where the next 10 to 14 days for today's second video. Day 10 will take us around the 8th of November and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles. Go have a look at Beijing Climate Centre today for the next uh, 40 days. That's going to take us into early December. Can you believe more about that? at the end of the video. But before we do anything else, I thought I'd just better explain what's happening at uh, GavsWeathers.com. So if any of you have been trying to get to uh, GavsWeathers.com, it's around 9.30 this morning. I'm recording the video at uh, quarter to three in the afternoon. It's been about five hours now. Uh, I've been trying to get to GavsWeathers.com in the past five hours. The website has been inaccessible. That is the very, very uh, sorry for itself looking page that you have all been greeted with. This site can't be reached. GavsWeathers.com took too long to respond. So the website's been down, and I don't know for sure what the reason is, because I haven't been able to get in touch with web hosts either. They seem to be... Uh, inaccessible at this time, um, except for a tweet they put out about an hour ago saying that, that there's an outage going on, which of course we all know. But it may have something to do with uh, Hurricane Zeta. So uh, look at this. This is on Twitter. This is uh, this was tweeted by Cody Matz. Cody Matz. I don't know who this is. Uh, weekend morning meteorologist at Fox 9 in the Twin Cities of Minnesota. Uh, in, in the Twin Cities. Minnesota native snow lover. Uh, so I think this is a pro meteorologist uh, somewhere in Minnesota. But anyway, uh, look at this. Uh, nearly 2.5 million people now without power, according to poweroutage.us. Mostly because of hashtag Hurricane Zeta. Uh, now more than a million of those in Georgia. Numbers will continue climbing over the next few hours, especially in Georgia and the Carolinas. So look at this. These southern states here, from Texas over there to Florida over there. Interesting that South Carolina is out of that, but North Carolina is in the outage area. But the worst areas are sort of along this Gulf Coast uh, like like uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, those sort of areas in towards, uh, in towards um, Georgia uh, as well. Uh, and that is as a result of um, Zeta, of course. I've been telling you a lot about Zeta over the uh, past few days. So, uh, so could it be that the weatherman has been laid low by the weather? Could it be that the weather itself has uh, has knocked me out today. Possibly it could be, but hopefully everything will be back to normal very soon. When you watch this video in about now it's time, it may be that Gals Office has gone is uh, even up by then. But uh, hopefully the website will come up, come back up later on. But we still have YouTube anyway. We still have YouTube. Um, we've got all of the Gals of his Facebook and Twitter accounts and all, all of that. We've got 11,000 followers on, on Twitter. So so we can upload videos still to uh, the Facebook, um, to, to the YouTube channel, uh, um, and then sort of share them across Facebook and uh, Twitter. So it's not, not really a problem, but it's a, little, it's a little bit inconvenient for anybody who watches the videos and all of the other content um, at the website. So I'm very, very sorry to anybody who's been trying to get onto gazwebis.com today, but these things are beyond my control. And all I can do is just sit back and wait to see if and when the website comes back up but uh but we still have the youtube channel for, for the videos anyway uh right so let's have a look at what's happening with zeta so uh zeta has done all of its damage um down on the gulf coast he's now moving uh northwards here as a tropical storm, so it's rapidly weakened, uh, gone from Hurricane Zeta to Tropical Storm uh, Zeta, giving maximum sustained winds of 60 miles per hour with minimum set pressure of 990 millibars, and uh, moving uh, northeastwards at 39 miles per hour. Very, very rapidly moving uh, storm now. Let's have a look at uh, the latest forecast for Zeta. So that is not available, actually. The latest forecast doesn't look like it's available. Oh dear, uh, never mind. Uh, right, so uh, we'll forget that idea. Things are going very well today, are they? Let's have a look at the maximum wind gush, shall we? So, um, currently, getting maximum stay winds of 60 miles per hour. 
Uh, and uh, that's going to go down to 50 miles per hour, max and sustain. Uh, somewhere between uh, 50 and 60 miles per hour, post-tropical, like in the next uh, few hours. Um, so it's still a considerable blow from Zeta, but not as bad uh, as it was, like, um, uh, not as bad as it was uh, sort of a few hours ago. Uh, now, I have a disturbance area just here. It's yellow X down here in the far southern part of the Caribbean. Um, so, let's see what I said about that. It's disturbance 1, made 20% chance of site cremation in the next 48 hours, a 60% chance in the next five days. A large area of disturbed weather moving uh, from the tropical Atlantic across the Lesser Antilles and into the Eastern Caribbean Sea is associated with a pair of tropical waves. Our uh, winds are expected to become more conducive for development of this disturbance during the next couple of days, and a tropical depression could form over the weekend or early next week while the system moves westward was across Central and Western Caribbean Sea. Wow, that could be another one. Here we go again. Is that our next tropical storm and or hurricane? We shall wait and see. Central, come back home. Central temperature is looking uh, like this. Uh, provisional up to uh, the 28th of October. Uh, yesterday, we are standing at 10.6, an anomaly of uh, just 0.1 of a degree uh, below average. So basically average for the CT uh, at the moment. It's going to go up over the next couple of days. It's a very mild weather, but then it's going to be a downwards correction. So in the end, I suspect we're going to finish up somewhere quite close to this as a finishing point. We'll probably finish up somewhere quite close, 10.5, 10.7. Uh, somewhere in that region, I would have thought, not too far from average at all. Going to be very wet, of course, over weekend uh, as well, but changes, changes, changes next week as high pressure takes over. So uh, here we go. These are the 500 millibar height on flow charts for Penn State University uh, for the next week, 10 days, with the ECM on the top and the GFS on the bottom. So 500 millibars is an area in absolute high pressure, low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream. Red extrapolates high pressure, blue, low pressure. Look at this. High pressure dominates. High pressure in control, sitting over and to the east of the country. In the 7 to 10 day time frame, it gets into the second week of, uh, of November with uh, low pressure out of our southwest drawing up like a southeasterly to southerly flow. So technically, the air could be quite mild drawing up from the south, but bear in mind we're under high pressure. So there could be sort of frost and fog, that sort of thing. But GFS is very similar, but the orientation of the ridge is slightly different. It's more of a Scandinavian type high, more of a high pressure sitting uh, to our east northeast, trying to bring in like an easterly wind, uh, cut off trough down to Spain. And Portugal will bring some very wet weather to them. These are the GFS of rare temperature and precipitation ensembles. And let's go with it's through London town today. The red line is 30 at other air temperature average. Well, London Town is going to be very mild now through to the beginning of next week with above average temperatures. By middle next week, temperatures are dropping. They're falling away, becoming cooler than average as we go from Tuesday to around Thursday, and then possibly rising back up to be quite close to average. There's going to be a lot of wet weather to come as well. Loads of rain uh, between now and the early part of next week. Then we get a few days of drier weather under high pressure through the middle second half of next week. Then into the second week of November, we could get some rain uh, coming back. Temperature anomalies on the 29th of October to the 6th of November are going to be milder than average, not just the UK, but for nearly all parts of Europe. Precipitation anomalies from the 29th of October to the 6th of November are going to be average to wetter than average. This is the latest wind flow map from EarthNoldSchool.net. The reason it's getting milder but also wetter is that low pressure is in control and we are drawing in a long fetch southwesterly wind. Low pressure is the primary lows, like to the south of Greenland, but there's more low pressure around here. Here. And up come those southwesterlies. Look at that southwesterlies with the air originating all the way down here around the Azores and so on, pumping it up, pumping it northwards. And so, yes, we will be turning very, very mild. Let's see if we can see Zeta. Let's see if we can see Zeta on this. We've got to pull this around and look into southeast parts of America. 
Where is Zeta? I think Zeta is going to be this circulation just here. Let's zoom in so you can see Zeta is rapidly uh, weakening. But uh, that is a Hurricane, or it was Hurricane Zeta. It's Tropical Storm uh, Zeta at the moment, this uh, circulation. Around here, that's what could have uh, laid me low today. Uh, that could have put the weatherman offline today with his website. Maybe it did. Right, this is how the UK Met is looking uh, for Friday. Um, actually, what's going on here? So this is showing, uh, this hasn't updated since Tuesday. It's Thursday today, so I think better forget that. I don't know what's happened there. That's the UK Met. Hasn't updated. That hasn't updated since like mid, that's, that's updated since midnight on Tuesday. So better get rid of that, haven't we? Because you may notice that. Uh, right, so GFS, <laughs> this isn't going very well today, is it? Uh, GFS, this is how the GFS is looking uh, for Sunday as of 6am today, Thursday, 29th of October. It's one of those days today, it really is. So uh, Sunday, looking very mild and wet, bringing up this southwest wind. Here it comes, low pressure out in the Atlantic. Plumbing up the southwest is very mild, but also very wet with loads and loads of low pressure in control of weather. Heading into, uh, where are we going next? So going to Monday. Uh, right, low pressure coming in off the Atlantic on Monday with a cold front. We have a cold front spreading across the country, taking heavy rain with it. And behind that, we pull in cooler air from the northwest. Some parts of northwest Wales could get over 200 millimetres of rain from today through to Monday. It's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, now, we get through into Tuesday. That low pressure will clear away to our east and we pull in a colder, showery uh, northwesterly. Uh, then into the middle of next week, high pressure takes So We've been quite a cold air mass, so that could well produce some frost and fog. Through the middle part of next week, high pressure drifts over to the east of us. And by the end of next week, still pretty cold, I would have thought. Winds coming off the continent. Um... And, uh, yeah, more frost and fog is possible for the second half of next week. Now, by next weekend, which is like the 7th of November, we start to pull up more of a southerly wind. So that could begin to turn things uh, milder, but we could have some outbreaks of rain coming up with those southerly winds, particularly as this area of low pressure starts to get going down to our southwest. That's a chart for day 10, uh, by the way, which is the 8th of November, low pressure down to our southwest, high pressure to our east. So, probably a bit milder, drawing up wind from the south, but there could be some rain involved uh, with that. In more extended range, the high pressure begins to reform and take over again as we move in towards the middle part of November. We're back under high pressure, which would deliver a lot of dry but probably quite cold weather. The wind is coming in off the continent, so I would imagine at the very least there could be frost and fog, unless we're under anti-cyclonic gloom, uh, of course. Right, uh, GM, again, looking wet and windy on Sunday and continuing to Monday as well by Tuesday. Uh, so through course of Monday, we turn cooler, brighter, and showering. And then the high pressure makes its move through the middle part of next week, bringing uh, dry egg weather in from uh, the west of that area, high pressure, but it will be quite cold with a risk of frost and fog. Moving up towards day 10, high pressure remains in control till we get to day 10, when we're just seeing the high pressure breaking a little bit. So some of the high, some of the ridge is going over towards the eastern part of Europe. Some of the ridge, let's change the colour, is pulling out into the North Atlantic. And we've got this low pressure to our North Atlantic could be starting to dig in with a jet stream. Could that be starting to bring some colder air in from the north just beyond day 10? Maybe it could. Uh, ECM looks like that. So again, cloud, wind and rain on Sunday into Monday. Very wet and windy. Very wet and windy on Monday. Back to call the shower conditions for Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, high pressure takes over. In the middle part of next week, bringing loads of dry but cold, frosty weather. Um, that could last in the second half next week as well. The weekend of the 7th, 8th of November begins to shift the wind round to the south. It starts to develop low pressure to our southwest, so becoming milder potentially by day 10, but also becoming uh, wetter as well, especially so down in the south. This is rainfall forecast based on the ECM run from Tometrio.com. Loads of rain piling in from the Atlantic. Loads, loads of rain piling in from the Atlantic. More rain coming and going. Just, just never really breaks until we get into next week. And then things uh, will start to turn drier as we go into next week. High pressure builds in, settles things down. And uh, yeah, we're looking at much drier conditions through the second half of next week. Before winds turn into the south over weekend of the 7th and the 8th of November, um, we possibly start to get some showery rain. 
train going out to our west. These Yoshas are a table within the East Yemen Summer today, four day ten by the Icelandic Met Office, gets us to the 8th of November. We have 23 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure sitting over to the east of the country. We're bringing like an east to south easterly wind with that, or a south to south east wind, probably. So, a lot of dry weather, there is some low pressure down here, as we know. But quite a bit of dry weather, showery in as far south and southwest, temperatures probably staging a little bit of a recovery. 16 have the high pressure more up towards Scandinavia and are bringing in slightly more of an easterly flow that will be drier and colder. And 12 have high pressure at day 10 pretty much over the country really. Mainly dry and probably quite cold uh, with those uh, 12. Most of the options seem to involve higher pressure uh, up to day 10 I think. Two weeks time, these are the options that we've got. This will get us to the 13th of uh, November, which is going to be Friday the 13th, I think, this year. 20 members of the ECM ensembles will have high pressure through the country and to our north, low pressure down to our south, drawing up like a southerly type flow into the south with some uh, outbreaks of uh, rain in there. And probably a bit milder with temperature too. 16 have a proper old Scandinavian high. Look at that. That's a proper Scandi high. And can, uh, you know, uh, uh, a result an easterly wind probably uh, with that. And 15 have a high pressure like to the north of Scotland. So somewhere between Iceland and Norway in the Norwegian Sea. And again, that will be bringing in an east wind. Very, very interesting charts these. Maybe turning cold from the east. Maybe turning cold from the east by the middle of November. We shall see about that. Uh, lastly, we've got the Beijing Climate Centre. These are 500 below our heights broken down into 10 day periods. The first 10 day period takes us from the 1st to the uh, 10th of November. So uh, the coming 10 days will have high pressure to our west southwest, low pressure to our north, bringing wind from a northwest southeast uh, trajectory. So quite cool in the next, uh, in the coming 10 days, but with a lot of anti cyclonic influences, influences, especially so down in the south. The next 10 day period looks quite interesting. That has a high pressure moving uh, uh, over into the middle of the Atlantic, so like a mid Atlantic ridge going towards southern Greenland. There's a trough of low pressure to the north of Scotland and over Scandinavia. I think the wind flow and direction is still like northwest to southeast, but possibly that could almost start to back the wind into the north there. So that could be quite cold actually from the 11th to the 20th of November, especially say the more northern areas. Uh, next 10-day period will be the 21st to the 30th of November. Again, a mid-Atlantic ridge through here. A trough of low pressure uh, over and to the north country and to our northeast as well. I think the suggestion is definitely there that there could be like a dip in the jet stream in the 500 billabar flow. The jet doing something uh, a little bit like that. Low pressure through here and a mid-Atlantic ridge just there. So that could be quite cold. Again, this could be quite a coldish November shaving up here. Can you believe? And then the final 10 day period gets into December. Wow, look at this. It's the uh, 1st to the 10th of December. High pressure just going a little bit further south was then, and probably starting to re establish a little bit more of a westerly flow. Milder for the beginning of December, maybe. Could be. Uh, finally, if you have enjoyed this video, so you're enjoying the content on the channel at the moment, please can you give us a thumbs up on the video. Uh, make sure you uh, click like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, tell us know what you think in the comments and don't forget to tell your friends about Gars Wevids. And we are moving quite quickly towards 8k subscribers. And uh, when we get to 8k, we're going to give away a £30 Amazon voucher in a live stream. So uh, we've got to get to 8k first though. Uh, and I think we'll do it hopefully before the end of the year. Right, that's it then uh, for video number two. Now, later on, I may do a, a video for Halloween and Bonfire Night. Did one of those uh, last week, and I, I should have brought you one before now, actually, the Halloween and Bonfire Night. So I'll probably try and have a look at that um, period uh, this evening, I would have thought. Again, that probably might just be on YouTube. It may be able to be embedded to gazwebbies.com. Depends whether the website is back up by then. Uh, or not. Really busy day coming up tomorrow. Really, really busy day. We're going to start off with JMA Friday. We'll do a 10 to 14 day video update as well. And we'll have the ECMWF 42 day look ahead. Six week look ahead with the ECMWF tomorrow evening around 5, uh, 6 ish in the evening. That will take us into the middle of December. 
uh, I think. And then our 10 o'clock will be live streaming uh, the GFS 18s there. As we are now into GMT, we will be able to do Friday night pub run live streams. Um, and it'll be a real laugh at 10 o'clock on Friday night. So that's going to be, first one of those will be tomorrow. Uh, for this video, though, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.